Weeklies after the talk with WPPMLP Philadelphia 106.5 FM. We talk weeklies after the talk with your boy Charles Gregory and the beautiful Lauren Sizzle and the beautiful Classy Ladies and Sparkle. my guy Daryl Smith Jr. Definitely in the building. So without further ado, uh, Sizzle, who do we have today? Who do we have today? So we have um, the beautiful Miss Carrie Campbell. She is based in Phoenix, Arizona. She created the Unstoppable Women Project live tour her identity it's a free two-day event that helps women reconnect with their true selves and overcome past burdens her mission is to guide women in shedding negative influences and evolving into their highest potential embodying her belief i am going to invest in them so they can invest in themselves so let's give a warm we talk weekly welcome to miss carrie campbell Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so how are you doing today? <laughs> you know, I am I am amazing. And I have to also tell you as we get kicked off here, I'm I'm traveling and I wasn't supposed to be traveling. And I ended up in the loudest hotel room <laughs> in, in the world. So my, it is just my hope that you like there are teenagers having a blast all over this hotel. So I really hope that you're not picking up the background noise. I found a quiet oh spot, God. but I'm great. Yeah. So are you traveling at an event or or um no, traveling I'm actually traveling. I wasn't supposed to travel, but I'm traveling for a private client. So a lot of my my private clients who I coach, I, I go and I visit them several times a year. And this was kind of like a last minute one that jumped onto my schedule. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, that sounds amazing. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about how you, you know, you got started and, and what influenced you to get started with um, your Unstoppable Women project. Yeah, I'm so I mean, please stop me if I just start rambling and because I no, can talk about fine. this for, for <laughs> forever. I am so passionate about it. Um, interesting uh, sidebar, I guess, for everybody listening, if you do end up like following me or anything like that, we actually are in the process of going through a rebrand. So the Unstoppable Woman Project is actually shifting into the Herdenity Project. And that's where we're going. So we're, we got some big changes coming up. But you know, with that said, just I don't want I want to help people not get confused. Um, with that said, I mean, I mean, if I were to really go back and talk about where this all started for me and, and why I'm on this mission, you know, I'm a clinical counselor. I've been in the industry for 25 years, but really it goes way back before that. It was my my mission and my passion in life to, to help people and to change lives from the time I was really young. When I was like four years old, I remember my, my four or five, my grandpa asked me, he said to me, he's like, what do you want to do when you grow up, Carrie? And my answer was like, I want to change the world, grandpa. And you know, like all grandpas do, he like patted me on the head and he's like, you go do that. And so my my entire life, my entire career has been been committed to, to helping people, to serving people. I've done so many different things in my career but no matter what as a as a human performance coach I always find myself gravitating back to women and I think that there's a large part of it because as a woman I've traveled my own journey of self-awareness self-identity and, and really kind of like working through all the darkness to get to where I am and I want to give it back to women so for me it was really important at this juncture in my life the unstoppable woman project has been around for four years but this year we're taking it um, much bigger. We're, we're going like huge. And, you know, I could talk about that. But for me, it's I really want every single woman that I can possibly reach to have the the availability to high level coaching and a high level process that can get them from stuck to sustainable, happy, fulfilled and so on and so forth. Awesome. Carrie, based on all the oppressions that women have dealt with, or um, her identity. What do you think about us having a woman president who's now um, a presidential in the presidential election? That's a great question. I love, you know what? I was, when I was reading your, like the, all the information about We Talk Weekly, I love the fact that it's just kind of like a go with the flow conversation. You know, I, I think that for me, um, I really do firmly believe that gender notwithstanding everybody has an opportunity should have an opportunity at every every podium every position in in the world i think that as a woman i've really never personally personally limited myself based on the fact that i'm a woman and so i think it's really powerful and sends an amazing message that we're we're not allowing that to be a limitation and we're we're giving the opportunity for that cuz personally i don't I personally don't see it as a, as a limitation in my life. So I think it's a beautiful breath of fresh air. 
that we're, we're stepping into that space. Awesome. Now, you've successfully held events in Montreal, and now you're based in Phoenix, correct? Yes, I've been based in Phoenix. I just host events in multiple different places. But yeah. have, you, have you seen from the, the culture of the events with the women? Have you seen from different regions? How do you tailor your approach to, to get or convey your word across? That's such a good question. I love that question. So, you know, I think, so the first thing for me is I've been leading groups and I have like, whether it's groups virtually or groups um, in person and events with large groups of women, like, I mean, I'm talking like 500, a thousand people in an audience, you know, for me, it's really about taking the time to, to talk with people and get to know women and get to get to connect with them. So I've never really been a big fan of like, you know, the person who's hosting the event staying like behind the curtain. I am at all of my events, at all of my experiences, no matter what, what I'm stepping into, I always make sure that I take time to connect with people and get to know them. Because by the virtue of doing that, you know, I'm making sure that I'm not addressing people based on any sort of a bias or a presumption. I'm really getting the opportunity to talk to people from an individual basis. And it does change. It does change from one environment to another environment. You know, I, even in my in my online communities, you know, I have women from all walks of life with all experiences. And so for me, it's really, really important that I take that all into consideration when I'm addressing a room so that I can make sure not to marginalize anybody in that room to the best of my ability, obviously. I don't know everything that everybody's experiencing. Are you seeing um, any similarities in some of the issues that these women are facing? Um, I guess while you're, you're kind of, you know, dealing with them. Yeah, you know, I see, yes, the answer is a big yes on that one. You know, it's, it's interesting. There's a statistic, 73% of women list themselves as their last priority in life. And I would honestly say that's the, the most global similarity for all women. One of the reasons that I made her identity a free event, you know, we're, we're actually shifting to pay what you can, $25 or $50. <laughs> but the reason I'm doing that is actually for women to put skin in the game because, you know, we, we, have, an, we have women who sign up for the free event, but then they don't have the value that they haven't invested in themselves. So we, we, we're not seeing as many women show up based on the people who are registering. But I take that back and I digress to my point. You know, the reason I made it a free event and the reason I'm keeping it at a like $25 registration for this experience is because what I came up against was women who I was reaching out to and connecting with, they loved the idea. They wanted to grow. They wanted to do self-development. But then it was like, well, my son needs hockey equipment, but this needs here and I need this. And I just watched these women like, like give themselves all the reasons why they couldn't be there. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I literally am going to take away that barrier. You don't want to invest in yourself or you have a story that you can't invest in yourself. So I'm going to remove that barrier and I'm going to say it's free. It's free. Come. Because I think that as women, we we really really don't take care of ourselves the best that we could and i think it's a very i think it's, i think part of it's conditioned by influence and i think part of it's just in our nature as women to nurture and to care for that is like an like across the board i see that everywhere I, I think women are actually more likely to invest in themselves from a business standpoint or an entrepreneurial standpoint for women who are in business because it's not they're not seeing it as a selfish act for themselves they're seeing it as for their business to make money for their family for their kids but when it comes down to like i'm going to invest in something that's for me it's a really really hard thing to put themselves first and then i see it follow through into the rest of their lives like you know blocking off two days to come to an event or you know being able to participate in things they just are really good or we are really good at finding all the reasons to not show up for ourselves wow. so what are some of the biggest success stories that you've heard from women that um, attended the event um, and, and maybe some feedback that you got yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I really love what I do. And so like I could talk forever about watching people change and evolve. And so, it, you know, obviously there's story, it, you know, success stories from the events, but, you know, I'm going to go a little bit broader than that. Um, I'll start first with the events, what a lot of women, you know, what I've, has been shared with me. But this one stands out in particular. So I did a, an event in Phoenix back in June. And one of the women who was in the room has been to all the events, Tony Robbins, Jack Canfield, you name it, they've been to all of the personal development events. And the woman after the event, she said to me, she goes, of all the events I've ever been to, I have never seen what happened in that room. She goes, within a matter of like 30 minutes, 
women started being vulnerable. They started opening up. They felt safety. They were expressing themselves. Women were crying. Women were connecting. And it's really something that I pride myself on in terms of my work because in order to self-actualize, we all need to feel safe. We all need to have emotional safety. So inside of my environments and my rooms, that is the first thing that I absolutely make sure is in place, safety. So for me, I think that that's one of the standout things, When whether I'm hosting a retreat, an event, a group, whatever it is, when people come to it, I think they come to it with the expectation of being guarded and not really sharing, or they don't think they're going to share, but then they go through this huge transformation and they feel safe and they don't know really what to do with that. So that's like one of my favorite things from an experience level. And then, you know, one of the things that I think is like, I have so many stories of success. I could talk and like, it's not even my success, success stories. It's theirs, right? Mm -hmm. Like I love sharing the stories that my clients go through. There's, I'm going to go with this one right now because mm -hmm. it's a very exciting moment for me. You know, I always tell people that I have the honor of changing lives, saving lives and creating lives. And it really does span that globe. And so probably about six months ago, maybe no a little longer than that, about a year ago, one of my clients started working with me and, you know, we've been working on, you know, her identity and her mindset, and all of these things. And her and her partner were actually going through in vitro fertilization treatments. And they had literally, they had lost or not lost. They had had multiple trials and it didn't work and they've lost, you know, they've lost, you know, the, the, the fetus and all of these circumstances. And then back in December, uh, they, they, the, the, the feet, the, well, the, I guess the embryo implanted and they got pregnant and the baby was delivered like a week ago. So the, it was like, so the journey, like the journey of watching this woman, like harness her mindset, harness her identity. She stepped into the role of, even though she was afraid to step into the role of being a mom in her mind, because she didn't want to be heartbroken again, she stepped into the role of being a mom and the identity of being a mom. And their little baby was born last week. And it was just the most magical moment. So that's like, I, I, I have three stories like that, where someone has conceived through the work that I get to do with them from a mindset standpoint. And that's just for me, that's just a miracle. So that I, that's the one I'll go with tonight. Thank you for sharing that. Carrie, so for people, we know we want them to come to your events, but for those who may not have, you know, can go to your event, can you tell us something small but impactful, impactful steps that they can start today to rediscover in themselves? Like what advice would you give at one of your seminars? Um, again, we know we want people to attend, but what could you tell someone today that could say, hey, I want to know who she is or I now want to attend? What could you let us I know? I love it. I love it. I'm going to give you three quick hits because I, I can't narrow it down beyond these three, but I'm going to make them quick so that it's not too long. The first thing is wake up every day and live with intention. And living with intention doesn't just mean waking up and being like, oh, I'm going to go into my day. I actually encourage women to ask themselves the question, who do I need to be today? Who do I need to be today? Because who you need to be today to get the job done in your life changes based on if you're hormonal, if you have an issue over here, if your teenage daughter is having crisis, who do you need to be today? Some days we need to be the warrior. Some days we need to like step up and we need to like get ready to go to battle and face the day in front of us. And then some days we need to be a little more gentle and a little bit more compassionate and a little bit more kind to ourselves and we need to rest. So it's probably one of the most powerful questions I ask myself every day. Who do I need to be today? So that's the first thing that I would say. The second thing might be my most powerful like one liner that you could possibly use. I can't take credit for it. It was one of my clients who took our experiences and put it into it. I encourage everybody to practice talking to yourself more than you're listening to yourself. Because what you're listening to is a narrative that's going on in your mind that likely is not serving you. We, in our minds, we, you know, most of our thoughts are negative. We, we perseverate on things that don't serve us, how things are not going to happen, why it's not going to work, why we're going to fail. If you learn to talk to yourself more than you're listening to that little voice inside your head, you will start to see you choosing different things. And then the final thing is at the very end of the day, I encourage everybody to count your wins. Look back at the day, go to bed, don't count your losses, don't look at where you failed, don't look at where you could have been done better. The unconscious mind, it works while we're sleeping. It's ongoing. So before you go to bed, 
clear the slate in your unconscious mind and count all the ways that you won the day. We all win our days. If we are here and if we are alive and we are breathing, we did something to win. And it's just one of the most powerful ways. It's, it's scientifically based to start changing the way that we perceive ourselves and changing our narrative. So those are the three things that I would say takeaways that you can execute immediately. Carrie, let me tell you, mm -hmm. that information that you just gave, you just dropped some gems because literally like all those things I had to do for my for my own self, because, you know, those voices, the negative voices that you hear all the time telling you what you can't do, what you can't be and what you can't accomplish and who you are not is is what you hear all the time. So I literally had to start talking over myself and just saying these things and, and, and you know, just trying to be positive and speak positive things and like even the even you said that your brain it just never shuts off like sometimes i feel like i wake up and i'm thinking about stuff that like i never slept just my mind was going the yeah. whole time so that right there totally. is just it's just phenomenal awesome. thank you thank you it's a lot more difficult to put into practice i get that but it's i always tell people it's simple it's not necessarily easy you know, but if we yeah. can, we can take a simple process and apply it to a very complicated thing, which is us as human beings, our minds, our brains, our hearts, very complicated things. I try to keep my process as simple as possible so that I can have as a, much effect on people as I possibly can. Awesome. What's the legacy you want to leave behind? I, you guys ask such great questions. Um, so my, you know, I've actually done this before. Um, I actually opened a presentation one day with my tombstone on the um, on the screen. And I have three places I want to leave my legacy. So I want to leave a legacy in my love, in my family, and in the lives that I've changed along the way. And, and really for me, if I were to bring that into where I currently am, especially with what I'm doing in my, in my career and helping women, my, my, my mission and my mantra is that no woman gets left behind. And so the legacy that I want to leave is that I make elite level coaching available to all women, regardless of demographic, regardless of finances, regardless of where they live. I really want to make it that no woman has to be left behind. And that's where I want to leave my legacy. Awesome. Carrie, now you've been, you've had great success with the Unstoppable Woman Project and her identity. What's next? What's next for her identity uh, plans to expand your tour? Give us some information on that. Yeah. So my, my, I'm on this massive mission right now. My, my next stop. So if I were to like, we're going live tours, we're going, you know, luxury retreats, different coaching. We have 10 calendar dates on the schedule for next year's Herdenity one day events. And then we're doing two full blown summit events as well. But really and truly where my vision is locked on, and, and this isn't necessarily like a task list or an item, so for example, but my vision is locked on, I have every intention on becoming a household name and the female Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. That is where I'm going. That is what I'm doing. I, we want to, and when I say we, because it's not me alone, it's me and my entire team. We want to rival male thought leaders and be the new face of women's empowerment. And we want to stand up and we want women to be empowered around the world. And when I say like the Tony Robbins status, I think so many people think like, oh, when they hear Tony Robbins, they think fame and they think fortune and the celebrity status. I do not care about that. For me, it really comes back to if I have a name like Tony Robbins, if I have a household name, that means that I am reaching that many more people. And so my personal, my personal life goals, my personal core values are happiness, enlightenment and reach. And if I'm reaching people, the more women I can reach, the better. So we've got live events, we've got retreats, we've got online communities, we've got summits, we have so many things coming down, coming down the line, and I couldn't be more excited about it. So Carrie, can you walk, um, let's say a woman signs up to attend the treat, and um, can you walk us through like what, you know, the whole event is going to be like for an attendee from start to finish. What can they expect? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you join a, if you join us at a Herdenity event, so, I mean, the first thing I, I want to say is you're going to be welcomed by an amazing team of people who are, you're not going to feel like you, you don't know what to do and you don't know who to talk to. But so the, the way that I open an event always and forever is I, I, I share my story. I share my background. I think it's so important. You know, I always, I always tell a funny story from stage, you know, because I, I think it's really important 
important for people to relate. You know, I get up there on stage and I'm a little bit of a fashion person. So I'm looking cute in my little outfit. My hair is looking all, you know, done and all that stuff. But I always want women to know that I've traveled the journey too. And that just because I look the part right now doesn't mean that I don't struggle. I don't have challenges. I don't go through things. So I tell my story and I, and I give my story. And that right there breaks down the barriers, I think, for a lot of women of like not really knowing how to step into the space. But then we go into uh, what's referred to as the Herdenity Code. So really what I did was I put together a four-step process that takes you from, so it's identifying, releasing, visualizing, and then creating. That's the Herdenity Code. So we, we go through the process. I teach you, I educate you, I share the process on how you identify the parts of your, your identity and yourself that you have been or who you were and why you became those things. I really think it's important for women to understand that the identities that you've adopted in most cases, I, I never speak in absolutes, but in most cases, the identities that we've adopted that don't serve us are a byproduct of survival. You know, I was in an, you know, an abusive relationship. I had to adopt an identity as a people pleaser so that I could protect myself. So many women walk around feeling this shame and this embarrassment and this guilt about who they are. So we have to go through this process of identifying the non-serving identities. And then we step into a release process where now we're going to release that identity. We're going to forgive ourselves for what we need to forgive ourselves for. We're going to understand why I had to do that. We're going to make peace with why we had to do the things we did and, or who we became so we can take some accountability to create new. Until we release, we can't create new. We, we actually have a whole release ceremony. It's a really beautiful experience. Then at that point, we go on to creation. I always tell people it's not enough to eliminate. We have to create. We have to know where we're going. If we don't create, we just default back to what we know. So we start, we work on visualization. Where are we going? What do you want? I always tell women that if you don't have a vision of where you're going, how in the world do you know what to do when you wake up this morning, mm -hmm. right? Or tomorrow morning, we need to have a vision. It's our compass, it's our, it's our direction, it's where we wake up and go. So I go into the process of teaching women how to build vision, how to build, and, and vision is different from goals, right? So it's not, I wanna lose 25 pounds. It's more the vision, it's more built out. It's a story, it's, it's a feeling. And then we go into creating the new identity. So who do I need to become in order to achieve that vision. And I have an entire process of, that I teach women through that. By the time they walk away from her identity, not only have they identified and released who they were, and that doesn't mean that it's gonna go away forever. Like I walk women through that process, what to do when it comes up again, but then we create who you need to become. And then you get to wake up every day and go, okay, how do I need to show up as her today? Or her, you know, whatever name you give. I actually encourage people to name those identities. Who do I need to be today? So that's like the process that we, we walk through. It's a beautiful experience. Awesome. I have one more question. Uh, Carrie, so we understand about empowering women as a woman myself, um, but we also know that men are a part of the conversation because without, uh, without them, we couldn't be here as well. How do you engage for, um, involving men in the in the conversation or the role that women can play you know with their husbands brothers yeah. uh family and loved ones yeah you know i think this is such an important conversation and i and i can't take credit for what i'm about to say because it was a friend of mine who said this on stage um, a friend of mine was the first ever female in nfl history who coached inside of the federation and she was talking about this very thing on stage. And she said to me, she goes, you know, I'm all for women's empowerment, but not at the expense of men. And the moment she said that, I was like that right there. And that's my belief. I, I, I think, yes, yeah, women's empower always. I am always for women. But I think that we have to honor the fact that men have, like you said, they, they're, they're a part of the conversation. So for me, I think it comes back to... I really think it comes back to understanding, right? I, I really advocate for, for women understanding the role of the men in their lives, understanding like interact, like men and women are different. We have different, like literally our brains are different, right? Understanding those differences. And I think it's really important not to make the men in our lives our enemy, but to make them our advocates and our allies. And I really think that that comes back down to knowing ourselves and stepping into the conversation in a place that serves us so that we can all really work together for like whatever goal we're working towards. Absolutely. So um, who is Carrie? Who is, who is Carrie? Yeah. Who is me? <laughs> I mean, I'm mostly ridiculous. Most of the time. 
You know, that's a that's a good question. I'm so many things. Um, if I were to like, if I were to just give one word for who I am, and then I'll, I'll expand on it. But if I like, this, this might sound like a cheesy answer, but I love. And, and for my entire life, you know, I went to an event once where they asked us for our one word, and my word is love. I'm love. I believe. I really firmly believe, as as you, can, you can't say this to everybody without them thinking you're a little, you know, cuckoo. But I firmly believe I was put on this planet to do the work that I do. I believe I was put here to love people and to save people and to change people and to do this amazing impact work that I do. So. I am love. That's that's the core of who I am. But on a, like on, I mean, I'm a I'm a mom of two. I'm a wife. I'm a I'm a professional fitness competitor. I'm a speaker. You know, I'm a dog mama. I'm I'm all of those things. Who I am right now, if we're talking about the identity that I'm stepping into, because I change my identities all the time, the identity that I'm stepping into right now and that I I'm practicing on becoming more of is uh is this just badass woman who is yeah. creating an empire of impact, right? That is like every single morning I wake up and I bring that fire into me. And I'm that woman on stage who's got women who I'm, we're together and we're cheering together and we're just like that energy. So who I am right now and who I am becoming, every single decision I make right now in my life is governed by that woman, that woman who I'm becoming. And she is a force to reckon with. And she's got vision that is crystal clear and no one's getting in her way. That's who I am right now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So all of that has just been really, really, really phenomenal. And we were so excited to have you today. I'm super excited about all the lives and all the women that you're going to touch. Um, let everybody know that's watching where they can find you, where they can keep up with what you're doing, where they can, uh, you know, find out about your events and attend. Yeah. the I mean, the easiest place is to go to Instagram. That's the easiest place. It's Carrie underscore Campbell underscore UWP. So that is the easiest place. And on there, if you DM me, I message, it's not a bot. If you, if there's a link there to my my store where you can see, find out more information about, you know, my, my live events, my community community, you know, my book, I have a mindset toolbox that's available for people. That's all on Instagram. So Instagram's the easiest place to go. Uh, Carrie underscore Campbell underscore UWP. Awesome. Awesome. I like how you said uh, that it's not a bot. It's you directly. So I... <laughs> yeah, it's me. That's why it's not immediate. Sometimes it takes yeah. a little bit, but I, I respond, I respond to every message. Yeah. I really appreciate that. I just want to, um, we, you know, sometimes the guys fall back when, mm -hmm. you know, we want to, um, allow women to address their voice, to amplify their voices, right? And I thought that this was an important conversation for you guys to have, and so I wanted to support that, right? Um, but I, I I, do say, or I do want to kind of give you your flowers, and because I appreciate that you mentioned that you wanted to allow men to have that space to support also, right? Because I think oftentimes w what we're hearing are men having these conversations feeling like they're alienated now or feeling like you know we're here and we support also where are we at you know and i think that's the yeah. the conversation that's what we've been hearing lately and so i just wanted to thank you for acknowledging like yeah you know it's this is a a union so to speak that we have yeah. to support each other so i appreciate that yeah oh yeah. absolutely you know I'll, i mean full disclosure a lot of what i'm doing i wouldn't be able to do without the support of my husband <laughs> you know he no, he's no, he's yeah. my greatest cheerleader my greatest advocate we were in business together for 15 years we kind of took a little bit of a, a different direction because I wanted to do this mission and you know he's a man so he doesn't get to play in this particular world um in, this, in that in the same way but you know he is nothing but support and my greatest cheerleader and so I, I think like I said I'm I, I I will never ever lead women you know at the expense of men I, I think that we have to honor you know all of our roles I love that I'm gonna give you a round of applause for that so one more again, one more again, one more again. Why don't you let everyone know how they can get in contact with you, how they can find you and all that good old stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. You can come find me on Instagram, Carrie underscore Campbell underscore UWP. And every message I respond to right in there, there's a, a link to my store where you can go find out more information about my events. We're still updating it in the moment right now. But if you have any questions, you can just reach out to me and I'll, I'll hit you back. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank you for coming into the show. And one thing that we say on the show is once you come to the show, you're a friend to the show. So you're always welcome to come back. Awesome.
Fantastic. Thank you so much. I enjoyed Thank this. You, I appreciate Karen. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want you to go anywhere. When we come back, you already know we have the sizzle. I'm your boy, Charles Gerger, the beautiful. Lauren Sizzle. And the beautiful. Classy Lady Sparkle. And my guy. Daryl Smith Jr. Hey. And, the, and the beautiful. Carrie Campbell. <laughs> 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 <laughs>